Hi everyone and welcome. There are already tons of herder lessons out there and I honestly ask myself, who needs another lesson? But the answer was, I needed this lesson because preparing today's topic was as much of a lesson for me as it is hopefully for you. I try to analyze my own playing, how I use the herder that when I teach it to you, it's something personal and worth sharing. So let me show you the first approach. The herder in its original form is a three note grouping. Despite there are four notes, two 32nd notes are followed by two 16th notes. And those four notes in total, they take up the space of three 16th notes. So we can say the underlying rhythmic structure is three notes long and that's why it's a three note grouping. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, E and A, two, E and A, three, E and A, four, E and A, one. And now let's try to play this rhythmic structure on the snare drum first. And now what we're gonna do is we take the herder three and we add a bass drum at the end of it to make it a four note grouping. One E and kick, two E and kick, three E and kick, four E and kick, one. Now, as we can play the Herder 3 and the Herder 4, it's time to combine both groupings. Combination example one is three, three, four, three, three. And let's practice this nice and slowly between snare drum and bass drum. My orchestration example is to play the first grouping on the snare drum, the second one on tom one, third one on tom two, and I start the last grouping on the floor tom, swipe over to the snare drum to end the fill. And now let's hear this fill in the context of a faster groove. And now let's try out another combination example. Let's take three, four, three, four, rest two. And let's practice this together between snare drum and bass drum.
my orchestration example for this is to play the first note of each grouping on the rag toms and to play the last two remaining notes on the floor tom. So let's practice one bar of fill followed by one bar of time only. And now let's hear this fill also in the context of a faster groove. The second approach is playing hurtas while keeping the backbeat. We don't think of groupings necessarily anymore, but we take the ingredients of the hurta, which means playing 16th notes and doubling some of the notes with an alternating sticking of right left. In this first example, we double beat three and also the E of beat four. So it's a half of a measure fill. It starts on beat three. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. The orchestration sounds pretty cool if we play the notes before the backbeat on the rag toms and the notes after the backbeat on the floor tom. And now let's hear this fill in the context of a groove. In the second example of this approach, we double the end of beat three and the R of beat four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. And as an example, we can orchestrate the notes before the backbeat between the snare drum and tom one and the notes after the backbeat between tom two and tom three. So let's practice this.
And as our last demonstration for today, let's hear this fill also in the context of a faster groove. So this is it. Thanks for watching everyone. And I hope in today's lesson you learned more of a concept and a way of thinking how you can use rhythmic material instead of just learning a specific fill that is written out on a PDF. So please take these ideas even further. I'm excited to hear what you come up with. Hopefully I can hear you play one day. Be safe out there. Take care and bye bye. I'll see you next time.